awesome. Did any of you guys try my idea of eating snacks for it? Because if you did, feel free to tell others. And maybe you even tried um, to find out how people prepared. Maybe you, you saw some of the characters and how they prepared for the baby Jesus. Yeah, I definitely, when I watched it, I was thinking about how I could prepare for Jesus is coming. Not 100% sure yet, but I think I'm getting closer. <laughs> well, that's good uh, because today, Mort, we have, we get to learn more about how people prepare. Yeah. We get to see how the shepherds, the wise men, and how other people prepare for the coming of baby Jesus. So don't worry everyone, you got one more week. Yeah, and we're in this one, guys. So look for us, see if you can spot us. But we are in costumes, so you may be have a hard time recognizing us. <laughs> but it's okay. Just listen for our voices. If you close your eyes, you may not even know. You can just listen. That might help find us. <laughs> you guys will do great. Don't let more scare you. No, we're not scary. Don't yeah, so children, we're excited because tonight you get to watch how the shepherds, the angels, and the wise men prepared for the coming of Jesus. And just like you learned about last week, we were created to prepare with joy the coming of Jesus. And so we're excited to share with you tonight the shepherds, the angels, and the wise men. And like Fred and Mort said, watch for them and how they prepared. And families, I invite you to continue to prepare for the coming of Jesus. That's an exciting thing to prepare for! <laughs> All right, bye kids, have bye fun! Guys. Love you! Love, Love you. you! Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, may glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. So the shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. Luke 2, verses 14 and 16 through 17. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. Matthew 2, 11. Hi children, it's really good to see you. I'm coming to you from the inside of our shed and you may recognize this from last week because this is the place where I talk to you about Advent and how Advent is that word that means that Jesus is coming, and he's coming to live into our hearts this Christmas. And last week we talked about the word preparing for him to live in our hearts. And we talked about how Mary and Joseph, and also the innkeepers, and even the animals, prepare for Jesus to come, and they prepare for him to live in our hearts. So this week we're gonna be talking about, not so much about preparing, as much as we're gonna be talking about our response then to Jesus coming and living in our hearts. And so I wanna share with you a couple of different verses about how we respond. But I want you to be listening to exactly the ways that the angels, the shepherds, and also the three kings, the wise men respond to the news that Jesus is coming, all right? So I'm gonna start out with, I believe it is, we're going to be in the book of Luke, and that is one of our gospels that tells about the birth of Jesus and his ministry and then his death ultimately. But Luke chapter two, verses 14, we're gonna start with. And again, I want you to be listening for the angel's response. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, may glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. And I'm going to pause there. Oh, Bailey got garbage. She's pleased, isn't she? Yes, Bailey read. Kids, the angels' response that you heard. One of the things that I hear is how the angels 
proclaim the good news, all right? And the way we sign proclaim, I think, is so important to the meaning of the word. Just like last week, you learned that letter P where we point out, right? The word proclaim is the letter P from our lips, and we proclaim the news. We tell others about the news, but then it circles around back to us and goes out. I love that when we proclaim things to others, that means that it is news meant for others, but it is just as much needed for ourselves. I need to hear that word that Jesus is with me, that he has come for me, and that he loves me. I proclaim that, all right? And then we get to the shepherds. And it says in verses 16 to 17, so the shepherds hurried off. In some verses, it even says that they made haste. That means, that word means they dropped everything. They stopped what they were doing, and they went to find that baby Jesus. They hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. And now, we're going to transition to the three wise men, to the kings. And you know what, I backed up, or I should back up. I'm gonna teach you really quickly that sign for those shepherds. You take your scissors, you make your sheep here, you give them some wool, you cut it, you shear them, you make it a person. That's a shepherd, right? And we had those angels, and you remember that sign where we tap our shoulders and then fly up, all right? Angels. Now we're th hearing about those wise men or those kings. This is the letter K which is a lot like the letter P. But P, we point out at people, whereas K, we point up to the king who lives in heaven. So we put it on our shoulder and we bring it down. We're learning about the king's response to the news of baby Jesus. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him, and then they opened their treasures. What words do you hear there about the ways the kings responded to the news that Jesus was coming? I hear that they went, they searched. Children, do you know that the kings actually didn't see baby Jesus in the manger? They actually saw that star in the sky and they followed it. They examined it, they learned about it, and they sought after it for two years. So they went to the house where baby Jesus is now a toddler. And they got there and they saw the child with his mother Mary. In the scriptures, it doesn't say that Mary filled them in on the backstory of, yes, this is the baby Jesus. The angel Gabriel told us that this is the Messiah. This is how he was born. He was born in a manger. Mary didn't fill them in. It just says in the scripture, they saw the child with his mother. They bowed down and worshiped him. It was kind of like they had this immediate interaction with this most holy of holies, and their reaction immediately was to fall to their feet in worship. And then they opened up their treasures. They gave their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh to that baby Jesus. That's how they responded. Now kids, last week I talked to you about some of these angels. I made some of these manger cloths, and I talked about the ways that I was preparing my heart to receive Jesus. Tonight, I want to share with you the ways that I want to respond now to the news that Jesus is coming to Christmas. I've written out what I learned now from the angels, from the shepherds, and from the wise men. From the angels, the thing that I want to take from what they did is I want to give testimony to Jesus and who he is. I want to praise him, I want to minister to others, and I want to evangelize. That's what those angels did. They praised God the whole time, and then they ministered to the people. In scripture, most of the times when angels come and are appear in front of others, the first thing they do is they're like, hey, don't be afraid. I'm here with you. I want to call you. I am a presence of God for you. All right? They minister to people where they're at, and they love that. That's what I want to do. I want to come to people where they're at, and I want to share the good news that I bring peace to them. And I also bring news of Jesus, of the joy that he is, and I want to evangelize. 
I want to proclaim. I want to share that news with others. And that's how I respond to the birth of baby Jesus. Now, from the shepherds, I wrote that I will make haste. Again, that word where I'm going to drop everything, throw it to the side. I don't, I'm going to hurry my tail off to find that Jesus. I will make haste and look for Jesus in a manger, and I will find peace there. I love that when the shepherds received the news, they were told a few clues. They were said, they were told by the angels, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And they were like, okay, sounds good. We're going to go. They didn't have much information. And yet they got there to this place, to this manger, where there are animals standing around. And I know not only because of movies I've seen from the scripture that I've read, but in my own experience of growing up on a farm, in my own farm now, that when I am in the presence of animals standing around me, in the place of a shed, a barn, a stable, that that is where there is peace. Work has existed there. Life has existed. Imagine where Jesus was born. Generations of animals were birthed in that same place. Life and hard work happened there. I love that in that place, Jesus was. And when I picture that, when I picture those cows chewing their cud or the donkey standing by, breathing, I see their breath in and out, I feel peace. And that's what we often look for at Christmas time. We're looking for that peace that is Jesus. And that is what I want to bring to others. That's how I want to respond to the news that Jesus was born. From the Kings, I wrote that I will seek Jesus. And when I find him, I'm not going to be afraid to fall down and worship him. Like those kings who sought and sought and sought for two years. I want to look for Jesus every single day. When it is hard, when it is difficult, when it seems like I can't find him. I want to search for him. And then I am going to kneel down. I am going to fall at his feet. And I am going to worship him. That takes a hum humility. It takes a vulnerability that we want to know. And we want to become familiar with so that we are just so awestruck that we fall down and worship. I want that to be my response to the news that Jesus is born. And finally, this is one that I wrote that I felt like all three, the angels, the shepherds, the kings, this was their response. And that was that they were forever changed. They heard the news that Jesus was coming. They proclaimed that news. They sought after him. And when they found him or when they did this, they were forever changed. They were never the same. The shepherds then went from that place and told everyone. The kings bowed down and worshipped him. They gave him their gifts. The angels now, that was their job forever and ever now, is to tell everybody about Jesus. It used to be that Jesus was coming, and now Jesus is here. Right? They were forever changed. That is our mission to children. We want to be forever changed by the news that Jesus has come for us. Kids, a couple things that I want to share with you about our skit tonight. One of the things that I don't want you to miss is that when I wrote this skit, one of the kind of big things that I wanted to hit on was the fact that my wise man, who is played by Julius, he is continuously um, saying that he doesn't want to know where the star is. He doesn't want to have any hints. He doesn't want the director to tell him where baby Jesus is. He wants to find Jesus on his own. And the director kind of works with him and finally surrenders and says, okay, if he needs to search on his own, if he needs to wrestle with this thing, let him wrestle. Let him search. I love that that is a permission that we are given by Jesus daily, that he's going to prepare us. He wants us to also prepare our own hearts. We are prepared by your youth director or your children's youth director. You're prepared by your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors, your church family. You're prepared to know that Jesus is coming. Make room in your hearts. You're prepared for that. And yet kids, 
it's okay to wrestle on our own. It's okay to seek after him. It's okay to say, huh, I want to I wanna do my own investigating. I want to do my own um, thing with this faith life. And yet, children, that's our, also our challenge. You'll see that Julius isn't just like, okay, thanks for telling me I'm going to sit back in this chair now. No, he's like, oh, okay, I know enough. Now I want to find Jesus. I want to do this. I encourage you to do the same thing. Search for him with all your heart. Look for him as hard as Julius does. And then you're going to see at the end there's an excitement that Julius has that I want you to have as well. I want to be forever changed. I want that to be my response. Oh, next. I wanted to get him on camera. This is Maximus. He's our sweet kitty cat. And this is Bailey, right? Back again. Kids, I want you to know that this season of Christmas, I really miss you. Um, earlier today, the first time I filmed, it probably was good that it didn't take because I cried really hard when I was talking to you children on camera. And I was sharing how I listened to the songs of Christmas, and it makes me miss you a ton. I imagine uh, those shepherds banging their staffs, certain songs. I imagine my sweet little angels running in in their big winter boots, twirling their candle, being held up by the older angels. I picture your children as animals at the manger with your cute little donkey ears, saying lines, and I see some of you signing songs. Kids, I want you to know that I picture you and I love that um, at Christmas time, what I miss most is the practicing where you're just giving it your all. You know, kids, that we are not called to be perfect. We are never called to have a perfect Christmas program. That's never what I want, never what the Lord desires from us. Whether he asks us to give it our all, to just shine for him. And when I hear those songs, that's what I'm picturing, is I'm picturing you in ways that you shine for Jesus. I'm missing that a lot right now. And yet, kids, I love you so much because I can picture in my mind you at home because I know that I've heard stories of when you hear it come on the radio or when you hear it in worship that you dance or you sign because you have those memories in you. That's you giving it your all. You proclaiming that Jesus is here. You preparing your hearts. You ministering to your family. And you hunting and you searching for Jesus to live in your life and in your heart. I love you kids. And I miss you a ton. Know that you're treasured by me a lot. Would you please pray with me, kids? Father, we love you. We come before you this Christmas knowing that it's a little bit different. And yet we are so grateful, Father, that you ask us to just give everything our all. To love our families a ton. To love our animals a ton. And to be grateful for everything that we have been given, Jesus. We cling to you. We prepare for you to live in our hearts. Some of us wrestle with you in the ways that um, we question you or we doubt you. Pray, Father, that you would um, engage us in wrestling, and that you would win in those children's hearts who are wrestling, Lord. But, Father, I ask that you help us to respond to you in a way that um, brings us to our knees, that we fall down and worship you, and that we recognize how much you love us that you came here to be a baby so that you could live and die for us, to forgive us, Jesus. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Kids, I love you. Bailey, do we say Merry Christmas? Yes.
I was seeing a glimmer of hope in the cast, I began rehearsal with the rest of the cast. Let's just say the Lord is stretching me quite a bit. The Shepherds consist of another best friend duo. They're puppets. I mean, really, this is what we have come to. I mean, the one, he's sweet, a, a little squeaky and pitchy, but sweet. And the other one perpetually has his hand raised in the air and his mouth is like gaping open. He says he's a mouth breather. Quite honestly, I think he just likes to keep his mouth open, hoping he'll magically catch food in there because that's all he talks about. I mean, how am I supposed to work in these conditions with these type of cast members? Ugh, and there's animals everywhere. Okay, I just, I need, I need a break. I just unworthy and you shouldn't be sad we're so real if we weren't real why would food taste so good mm, it, it's just and like could i raise my hand like this if i wasn't real and speaking of <laughs> food i hope they have food in the manger is that where the shepherds are supposed to go to the manger with food of sheep. That sounds pretty scary. Will, will they, will they eat me? Well, you don't have to be scared. It's just going to be Luana pretending to be a sheep. <laughs> Crumpets, tea, I'll even have the key, tea cup. That sounds good. <laughs> um, are you a, a nice sheep? Or do you, are you the sheep that eats people? I'm a marvelous sheep, don't you know? I'm from Britain. Would you like to eat some crumpets and tea, Fred, as we talk towards the manger? Let's go find the baby! Ah. Uh. So this is just like my self-reflection spot. I kind of come here when things get too stressful and when I try to think of the positives, you know, cause there's positives in everything really. If you really try and look at it and you know, in that moment, I kind of fell in love with the shepherds. I mean, how could I not cast them? They're perfect. The way they interact with another, their back and forth teasing and their sincerity. Plus, Loetta offered to act out the entire mob of sheep at no extra cost. I mean, how could I say no to that with our budget? It's ridiculous, just let me tell you. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe there's a little bit more to these shepherds. Start with just a sachet to my left uh -huh. and your right. Uh, a what? sachet, just sachet. Well, I can do that. Yep. Good. Surely, surely, surely you need surely to move, move you your feet. Move. move your feet. So <laughs> that way. Oh dear. Okay. Well, let's let's say we did the sachet, people. Let's say we did the sachet. Well, I next, did the sachet. Good job. We did the sachet. 
Next, oh, we're gonna do shuffle stomp, ball change stomp. All right, let's see it. Shuffle stomp, ball change stomp. Well, surely at least you stomped. Okay, now we're gonna do triple spin. Ready, triple spin, spin three times this way. Yep, surely spin. Yep. I have vertigo, okay. that makes me Shirley, dizzy. Maybe a little more grace, maybe a little bit more like Lulu's doing it. The cone gets it my way. L Lulu, could you demonstrate? I don't think it's the cone, Shirley. Could you demonstrate the triple spin, Lulu? Three spins. I'm yeah, I'm gonna get dizzy though, just so you okay. know. Yes. Exactly, okay? Now, after we do the triple spin, are we ready for the next move? It takes a little bit. I'm not bit. ready, I'm still dizzy. You're gonna link arms, link arms. I don't think. Yes, you must, Lulu, you must. Arms, arms, link, Shirley, arms, link, arms. All right, now we're gonna go kick, kick, knee, knee. All right, let's see it, this way. Kick. Ow, Shirley, uh, no, Shirley, no. ow! Oh, she's kicking me. Shirley, oh, you're not trying to get Lulu. I can't work like this. She's getting in the way of my wings. I can't work like this. We're going to have a debacle okay, like let's the try from the top. Let's just try it from the top, all right? Sashay. No, Shirley, the spin is later. The spin, the spins when we go that way. Do we kick? So, every year, one of the best parts of the Christmas program is when the angels dance. It's a group of beautiful, sweet, tender-faced girls who come in and light up the stage with their dancing. This year is very different. There is no tenderness, there is no sweetness, there is no grace. No, no. This year is horrible. You see, what I have to work with for a cast, very limited yet again. Oh, what choice did I have though? Lulu insisted. She said she'd only ever been cast as an angel. And then Shirley follows her around like a lost puppy dog. So of course Shirley had to be an angel too. Ugh. If only I could at least get Shirley to maybe lose the cone, then maybe we could see her halo a little bit or something. At this rate, I'll be lucky to get him to do a spin move. Ugh. Guys, come on. Okay, let's start over. Let's just start over. Okay, crew, set up for set up for the first scene again. Oh, I can't even do this. Word on the street is um, well, the director only has us two old gals for the angel scene this year. So um, we're planning to do it kind of big. I mean, make it kind of kind of a thing and. And I can't really say exactly what's coming yet, but um, I have the ear of the director and the choreographer. I'm the choreographer. <laughs> anyway, so I'm picturing sort of a, a big open where I'm in a big flowy robe, there's lots of lights, there's lots of dancing and singing, and maybe a spare firework or two if we can spare it. And I think maybe some some lasers. <laughs> Nothing over the top, but something really, really, really nice. I think it's going to go well for us. And we're lifting off the ground. It's beautiful. I'm flying, Shirley. I'm flying. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, Shirley. Shirley's not involved in the planning. I leave that to Lulu. <laughs> and you're very, very good at leaving it up to me. Very good. And you just, you're really good at standing there. Standing there, yeah. I, I just stand there and, and I catch her and I, I lift her and I, yeah. I, I, do, I do it. Oh yes, that's the idea, Cheryl's. I mean, and then when it's my time to shine, you just get out of my way. And I get to do twirls and big leaps and jumps and big dance moves. We really make a good team. Okay, Shirley. Here comes the big lift. Yep, right around there. You're gonna put your arms around me and we're gonna give it in one, two, three. Yes! <laughs> oh, 
oh, that's going to look so good. The audience is going to love me, that. <laughs> you, you, can, you can, like, go now, Shirley, please. Please let go. <laughs> please let go, Shirley. But, but what about the baby? The, who's going to tell the shepherds about, about baby Jesus? Right. The, it's, not, it's not all about the dance. We, what about the announcement? Isn't that bigger than the, than the dance? Well, the the baby's great. I mean, the baby's the baby's fine. But the dance, the dance gets everyone's attention. The dance is the big scene where I, we, get all of the attention. Surely, we get all the attention, and then you get to stand there. It's the best part. You get to stand there and use your cone to project the message to all of the shepherds. Okay. Project. My, my cone so I can say it and kind of just mumble a little I, bit. And... I would say it loud and clear. Just really nice and loud and clear. Okay, so I, I, say, I say it loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. And sl slowly, you know, okay. for everyone to hear because we don't want any of those shepherds to miss out. I mean, they need to hear our message and, and I heard they're not even real people. So I think a little enunciation would do well. <laughs> You get my point. But Lulu does have surprising energy and ballet-like calves for the program. So, you know, that's a plus. And Shirley, um, what she lacks in expressiveness and joy and energy, I, I guess she makes up for with her Slow, slow delivery and intentional pausing. I believe our angels will capture the attention of most of the shepherds. It's a good thing they're kind of simple-minded, though. This is the musical debacle all over. Oh, not the musical debacle. <laughs> we will not have that again. Can't one of the other people do it? Like no, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, Shirley. It's going to be fine. You're going to be great. She's going to be great. <laughs> It's all coming, it's all coming, it's all, it's all coming together. I mean, you know, it, the cast, they're starting to kind of grasp it and we're filling in people where we need it. You know, like I needed someone to be a wise man. And then I remembered big boy Julius who said that he could play all three wise men all at once. I mean, I can't argue with that. So well, I guess we'll see how he handles it. I mean, he is pretty strong, but I don't know if he's gonna be capable of playing three characters at once. At the same time, when I worked in Hollywood, I mean, there were people that could handle like 10 roles at once. So I guess, I guess we'll see how this goes, but it, it's going better. It's, it's going better, we're getting there. All right, let's go everyone. Uh, hello, it is me, Julius Van der Poel. Big boy, strongest man in the world, and all three wise men. I am here to bring the city of David tidings and joy Julius, no. and love. Julius, no, Julius, uh. no, no, you're a wise man. For you don't say anything. Remember, you just come out. I need you lines. Carry the gifts. You worship baby Jesus. You don't say anything, okay? No, I have lines. Big boy, strongest man in the world. Your only job. Helga May loves when I talk. <laughs> well, this isn't Helga May. This is me, and I'm in charge. So, you're gonna come out. We're I'm in charge. Game. I am the strongest man in the game. world. Just do it again. We're gonna take, take, take another shot. Take another shot. We've had to retake this scene like 15 times. Either his tunic or his crown are too tight for his big boy muscles. Or he has to take meatloaf breaks with his sweetheart, Helga May. Oh, my sweet love muffin, your meatloaf. It make me so big and strong. He says that she is his top priority. I mean, this film should be his top priority. It's my top priority. And yet, no, he has to go and work out three times a day or throw doors on the floor. I mean, 
Look at what I'm working with. I am king. I am three wise men all in one. How can you cast me, biggest boy and strongest man in all of the land, and not expect me to speak? I should have the most lines, the biggest lines and the loudest lines. How you disrespect me like this. You know, I have things to say. I have announcement. This baby is a mystery to me. I do not know, but I will find him. I will search for him and seek him with all that I am. I will find him, I will find him first. And then if he really is the savior of the world, then I bow down. I worship the greatest savior in all the world and I grab my Helga May, my sweet love muffin. And we will worship her together with pounds and pounds of meatloaf. We worship the Lord, our savior. Julius, Julius, come here, big boy. It's right here. Come get this star, Julius. Julius, Julius, look, come here. Look, star, big star. And that's when I realized something. Why should I direct or require the wise men to just follow the star quietly? Come forward with gifts, bow down and worship baby Jesus, like it says in the scripture? No. If our wise man wants to struggle, seek on his own, and wrestle with the Lord's leading, who am I to stop him? And then, if he wants to be the one to announce to the whole world, I found him! It's he's back here! Me, big boy! I found him! He's back here! Come get him, the savior of the world! Got him! <laughs> and so, if he wants to be the one to announce to the world that baby Jesus is born, I found him! He's back here! I found him! He's still here! Come get him! My work is done. Helga May! Helga May, come on! Follow my voice! Follow the star, Helga May. We got to go worship together. Worship the Savior together. Come on, Helga. Helga. Joy to.